All right, so let's continue with this example of the circle. Let's try to understand how do we actually solve this using essentially the chain rule, um, but using it in sort of a different context from a, from a different approach. So what we do, right, is, is again, there's this assumption, right? There's this sort of assumption that you make when you're doing implicit differentiation. And so we assume, we assume that there's some function f of x which is defined uh, implicitly by the equation x squared plus y squared equals 1. Uh, what we mean by that is that setting y equal to f of x satisfies the equation. Right? So what we're saying is that there is some function f of x so that x squared plus f of x squared will give you 1. And of course there is. If this is our f of x, if I square this and I add x squared to it, I get 1. Okay? So in this case it's a valid assumption. Uh, in a lot of the examples we're going to see, it's not going to be so easy to actually find this function. And, and so even though we can't find it, um, still, we'll, we'll try to make this assumption and see what we can say. All right, so now that we've made that assumption, let's just try taking derivatives of both sides of the equation. All right, so we're going to take, take derivatives. All right, so what happens when we take derivatives? Well, the derivative of x squared is 2x. The derivative of f of x squared, here we need to use the chain rule. We're going to get 2 times f of x to the first power, so we just write f of x. But then we've got to multiply by the derivative of what's inside. Right? Chain rule tells us that this is necessary. So 2x plus 2f of x times f prime of x is equal to the derivative of 1. Derivative of 1 is 0, right? So if two functions are equal, their derivatives should be equal. That's the idea that you're using here. Okay, so then we say, well, what is it we're actually interested in? What we're actually interested in here is f prime. So let's solve for it. Let's take 2x, throw it on the other side. 2 times f of x times f prime of x is equal to minus 2x. Divide both sides by 2 times f of x. 2's cancel, and we get f prime of x is equal to minus x over f of x. But in practice, we don't write it this way. What we do is we say, well, we're not going to write f of x. We're just going to write y, right? y is equal to f of x. And if y is equal to f of x, then f prime should just be y prime. So what does this say? It says that y prime is equal to minus x over f of x, which is just y. And we've arrived at the same result as before, um, but I would say with less work, arguably with less work. Uh, and it'll be even less work when you realize that you don't actually have to bother writing f of x when you're going through this. You can just let y stand in for f of x the whole way through um, as you do the problem. And, and then we can ask, well, where is this going to be valid? Well, it turns out this will be valid pretty much anywhere that this expression is, is defined as long as we're on the curve. Um, we can see that it's not defined when y is equal to 0. Uh, that makes sense, actually, right? Because y equals 0. Um, on the curve, that's the location of the two vertical tangent lines, the two places where the slope is undefined, where y prime is undefined. At any other point on the circle, I can find the x and y coordinates for that point, plug them into this expression, and I will know the slope of the tangent line at that point. So this is, this is a big improvement. Um, and to see how this is going to work um, in the problems that we're doing, right? If I, if I start with the equation x squared plus y squared equals 1, what I do is I take the derivative of both sides, and I say, okay, the derivative of x squared is 2x. 
The derivative of y squared, well, we want to say that's 2y, right? Power rule. But we have to remember that y here is really a function of x, right? As we explicitly wrote over here. We're treating y as a function of x, and if y is a function of x, and we're taking the derivative with respect to x, chain rule says we have to multiply by the derivative of what's inside that power function. So what's inside that power function is just y, so we'll write y prime for the derivative. So 2x plus 2y times y prime equals 0. We solve for y prime, and we get minus x over y. That's certainly less work than solving explicitly for y and taking the derivative using the chain rule.